at the time of this recording, aka when this video comes out, uh, One Piece Red will be soon hitting the theaters November 4th, which I think, yeah, that's when this movie's coming out. And that is one of the best grossing anime movies of all time, beating Demon Slayer, beating Miyazaki films. And there's one reason, oh, one reason only. One Piece is one of the best animes of all time, and it's introducing and talking about a character no one knows anything about, really. That is Shanks. Now, before we go and talk about all that stuff, I'm here to talk about my top five fights, which our boy Shanks is in one of those fights. So let's dive right into it and start talking about these fights. So we're going to start off with something emotional, something cool. At number five, I have Luffy versus Usopp. Now, this is an emotional-filled fight that takes place just as the crew is entering Water 7. And for those who don't know, quick story, Water 7 is basically the intro part of one of the greatest uh, rescues I've ever seen in anime. But basically, the fight between Luffy and Usopp is over the Going Merry. Luffy says it's time to get a new ship, but Usopp does not want to let it go due to having, you know, emotional ties back to his home of the Sarah Island, Kaya, all those people. And, well... The fight is beautiful, and it shows that even the weakest character can hold his own if he has, you know, the the wits and the ability to do so. And it was honestly a very good and stunning fight, and it also ties in and makes the a anime kind of serious. And it starts in a serious tone, and it, that's a tone that ends up being carried throughout the rest of the anime. At number four, I have Frankie and Senor Pink. Now, this takes place in the Dress Rosa arc, which is way later on compared to the last fight. And Frankie comes, oddly enough, from the Water 7 arc and the, the rescue of Robin and all that. So, during this fight, in reality, it's not that long of a fight. Maybe it's like 13 minutes if you put all the footage together. But, you see these two hard-boiled men fighting each other, throwing fists, no extra special things. These are just hand-to-hand -hand combat. And during that time, you learn about Senor Pink and his tragic backstory with his wife and the, how they lost their son, to which he, the wife, you know, became immobilized, essentially. And then Senor Pink took on the bib and the, what is it, the sucker, the pacifier, to try and ease the pain of his wife, and to which she passed on and... It just stuck with him. It just stuck with a memory. And through the punches that Frankie and Senor Pink sw swap back and forth, it's such a beautiful, drawn-out, brought-out fight between two men. And even Frankie respected him at the end and said, I wish we'd met under circum different circumstances. Maybe one day we can get a drink together. That kind of thing. And it's really touching. And it's honestly, to, one of, to this day, still one of my favorite fist fights. There's no extra stuff. You know, there's not like, well, I mean, yeah, Senor Pink uses his devil fruit, but it's not like, you know, all centered around it. It's really just a man-to-man -man hard bold fight, and it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Number three, Rob Lucci versus Luffy. This is the arc, which stemmed right, uh, way after the Luffy and Usopp fight in the Impel Down arc, which is where they end up saving Robin from the, uh, this, the special government team. I can't think of a name. Cypher Zero. Um, they save them, uh, save Robin from that, and near the end, Ruf, Luffy fights the main villain. Well, one of the main villains, uh, Rob Lucci. This is one of the fights where you see Luffy actually pushed, pushed to the limits. Luffy is immobilized near the end of it. He can't even move. Like, he uses Gear Second, this is, which this arc shows off his new like move set, which he even said lowers his lifespan every time. That and Gear Third, Gear Second and Gear Third, they show off, and it shows an impact on what he does on his body. But he does this fight; he keeps on going to save Robin, to save his friends, to put an end to this evil that was brought in front of him. And it shows off Rob Lucci's fruit, which is the leopard fruit. I forget exactly what the name of it, but he turns into a leopard. So he gets, on top of his already superhuman abilities, even more fierce and deadlier attacks. And his mobility increases by like threefold. But Luffy was able to pull it out, knock him out, kill him. Well, I won't say kill him because he does come back. But knock him out and immobilize him. Enough for Robin to push him off and the going Mary to come and save the day and get them out of that, in, out of the jail. And it's so beautiful, and it's an emotionally driven fight, which not a lot of animes can do that. I mean, yeah, there's top tier fights from like Hunter x Hunter, from Naruto, from 
Dragon Ball Z. There's plenty of emotional fights, but nothing like One Piece offered. Number two from the same arc, Zoro versus Kaku. Uh, Zoro is the second in command, for those who don't know, somehow stumbled upon this video. But Zoro goes against Kaku, which is another swordsman, a part of Cypher Zero. And Kaku took on the giraffe for, I think, the neck neck fruit or whatever. I, I forget what it's called. But he takes on this human ability of being a giraffe. To which increases his strength and his range for his sword attacks. Well, because of this, Zora was pushed to his limits and he brought out a glimpse of hockey, which at the time we didn't know what it was, but he showed off his ultimate move, Ashura, which I'll reference later on. But this was a glimpse into what hockey can bring to a person. Yeah, there's armament hockey and so on and so forth, but with the ability of hockey, he was able to multiply himself to three people all attached to each other making six swords and knocking Kaku out in one fierce blow and it was so beautiful so well done and God knows Oda knows what he's doing now before we move on to the final fight I want to throw some honorable mentions uh, Luffy versus Katakuri a uh, great fight during the uh, big mom arc it was one of the best fights that I've ever seen, and it would have took number one spot, but I brought up the other ones because they have more of an impact on me. If you guys want to watch one of the best fights in One Piece, I really highly suggest watching the Luffy and Kakakuri fight, because Luffy and Kakakuri have such respect for each other. At one point, one of the daughters of Big Mom immobilizes Luffy to a point to which Kakakuri knocks that sister out and then immobilizes himself equal like to the equality of what happened to Luffy so they can have a keep fair fight and it affected Kakakuri because Luffy was the only one that didn't judge him for his mouth he said so what but it doesn't matter what you look like as long as you have a good heart that's what really matters and uh, it's so good one from the most recent arc the Wano arc Zoro versus Kaido in reference to the sure I've mentioned before Kaido uses one of his attacks and I believe he said one of the strongest attacks he has to knock out all the people fighting him in Big Mom well Zoro, being the badass he is, ended up destroying the attack with his ultimate attack, Ashura. Which, to say the least, yeah, it knocked him out, but he was able to stop one of the kind of strongest attacks by himself with no one else's help. And, I mean, that whole fight, and it's still going on in the anime right now, it's over in the manga, is such a good watch. There's so many things that come out of it, so many people showing off different skills and abilities. It's it's so good, so I highly recommend you guys go take a look if you are behind or if you want to watch some clips. This is one of the most memorable scenes from this you know, current arc. And my last honorable mention, it's not exactly a fight, but it is a fight. It's a fight to save all the islands from being destroyed, and that's Sanji versus Big Mom. And what I'm referring to is when Sanji fiercely put together a cake that he had to cook for Big Mom. It was... The only way he could satisfy Big Mom's hunger cravings, which once they get started, they don't stop until she gets what she wants, which was the wedding cake that Luffy and his crew destroyed in order to save Sanji. So a race against the clock, Sanji and Pudding and a bunch of other people got together and were able to make this cake that took them weeks and hours and were able to stop Big Mom, which it's not a fight, but it's still very honorable and mentionable in this segment because it's very huge and very impactful and it shows off the cooking skills and the abilities of Sanji to work under pressure and make anything possible and edible and it looked really nice. Now the number one fight that you guys are here for Shanks versus the Navy in Akainu. Now in the Marine Ford war where unfortunately spoiler alerts three two one where Shanks and White not Shanks Ace and Whitebeard pass away Shanks come in stops the war he stop, puts Akainu in his place, scaring him, and Shanks says, if you keep on going, you go after him, you're going after me, and you're starting a war with me. Which is one of the four warlords at the time, and that's, the Navy does not want to screw with the warlords, especially at that time. Well, the head honcho in charge said, alright Shanks, what do you want? Shanks is like, it's simple, I want you guys to go. And I want this war to end. Let everyone go bygones. We'll take the pirates bodies. And you guys take the marine bodies. And that's it. And he goes, done deal. And that's pretty much it. His presence alone put one of the fearsome admirals, which becomes the Navy commander, shaking in his boots just by showing up. And he stopped him with ease with his sword to protect Kobe, who stood up for Luffy and told Akainu to stop. Which, if Shanks wasn't there, Kobe would have died. So, 
That is my favorite fight of the whole, whole One Piece because Shanks is that much of a presence. But the thing is, we don't know much about him. In comes One Piece Red, which I say is going to be very canon because it shows aspects of what happens after the Wano arc. There's no new member, which has been, spoiler alert for those who watch the anime, three, two, one. No new member because Yamato, which everyone thought was going to join, doesn't. They, she goes off and does her own thing. So there's Jimbei, newest member, and then Nami has her cloud. And that just, there you go. That proves that this takes place after Wano. So this could be 100% canon. We learn about Shanks. We learn that he has a daughter. All this just comes to life. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your favorite fights are. And let me let me know if you guys go see the movie. Because at, at the time that this is coming out, I'm already heading to the theaters. Because I got me a day show. So, let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>